average. The average used to be about 700 to 750. Um, you know, number of years back. And now we're seeing that the, that the average unit size is anywhere from 600 to 650 square feet, which is really small. Um, what was it? One project I worked on in Queen Anne was a 400 square foot apartment that was running for $1,200. So that's Queen Anne. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit different. But uh, anyway, so let's. So in terms of glazing, we, yeah. So let's let's get back to that. Um, so when you do have a lot of glazing, the, what you have to do is basically start to look at all right. And now you need to have argon filled glazing. Um, you need to have um, special tints to the window. Uh, you need to you know, really you know, increase the yeah. And and basically what that what that means. So the so the developer you know, says, all right, I want as much window space as I can get. All right, what are you going to pay for? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what we're like having insulators. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, some of them, yeah. There's, there's all kinds of different things that, uh, that different trade-offs, uh, and, and I'll get to this in a second. But um, we'll talk about lead and, and lead and what owners can do that. Um, so the next, the next tier down is uh, the 2030 challenge. <coughs> and the 2030 challenge, I don't know if any of any of you have heard of it. Um, it's something that um, you know is, is uh, I guess, going. I don't know. If it's, it, it's essentially ahead of the Seattle Energy Code, and it's what people sign on to for various projects to meet different, different prestige, basically. So, for instance. Project the building that I work in right now. We met the uh, 2030 challenge for today. Uh, we are 62 percent, um, and each every five years, basically, that you know is going to change. So the the goal is that we be carbon neutral by 2030. That building will be carbon neutral. No, no, so no, just. Industry construction like standards. Like yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, yeah. So, so we're basically meeting it for today. Um, and you know, by 2015, if you want to meet the 2030 challenge, then your requirement is 10%. So the product you'll be building during that 2015. Yeah, exactly. Great expenses. Yeah. So it's it's you know it's getting extremely expensive, and and you know the Washington Code. Seattle code are slowly getting tougher and tougher because the industry standard is changing. So that baseline building that I talked about a little bit you know, the, uh, is, you know, the industry standard is all right. We're, we need to use this type of insulation. We need to use these different materials, and so that's slowly when when CBEC goes back through and does their surveys, I think they're going to find that newer construction is changing actually becoming more sustainable and carbon neutral. Um, just 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 purely by you know the industry standards. And so what that's doing is forcing the Seattle code and this to, to move forward. Yeah. What's two questions. What's the current uh, Seattle code in terms of uh, percent? Uh, I think Seattle code now is twenty percent. Wow. So that's quite a jump. And then, uh, does carbon neutral, does that take into account the energy sources in the Pacific Northwest? Or what do they mean by carbon neutral, I guess? You know, if you're using electricity and 60% electricity is generated by, you know, sure. carbon neutral sources, is that, um, is that factoring at all, or it's just saying it's, carbon it's, neutral it's, is? It's, it's mostly on-site. Okay. Yeah. And, and Materials actually go into it. Um, you know where you get your materials, how they're harvested. Uh, you know that that actually is something similar to this, where it's got you know by the end, hopefully the materials that we're using are about 50% recycled or 75% recycled, as opposed to you know, uh, using rubber trees as a, the opposite end of the spectrum. So. Um, so the twenty, so the twenty thirty challenge, basically, yeah, it, it, it 
moves up. It's, it's not an easy thing to, to meet. Um, no, I think, but it, it's a good, I mean, I'll talk about our office building in a little bit, but um, it, it's worth it in the long run in terms of cost for energy and, um, and heating and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, so this is, again, this is just the building uh, that we got the, the challenge. So um, I guess I'll have some time since it's here. Um, so this building, basically, there used to be a project. There was an old, old warehouse that's out on the site. Pearl Jam used to practice at this site. Um, they were all old, old, uh, old warehouse at the site. We had to knock it down. Built this. 95% uh, of the um, construction, the demolition, was able to be recycled. Um, not only by just recycling the materials in terms of um, you know, using the wood for compost or uh, wood chips, anything like that, but actual Pearl Jam fans. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we actually uh, we have a, a wall uh, that we actually took a bunch of the old. Wood floorboards and have this cool, cool wood floorboard. So when I came in and interviewed, they said, "You see that wall right there? Pearl." Jam. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Man, I want to work here." <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, so this this project, um, you know, I'll, I'll hit some of the highlights. Uh, it's, it's one of the first buildings. Uh, it is the first building, one of the first buildings in the city of Seattle currently that is not using. So all of our ventilation comes from operable windows. Um, we have, let's see, this is a very good picture, but let's see. So we have these louvers here that basically have carbon monoxide sensors. And when the carbon monoxide gets too high, the louvers open up and bring in fresh air. Um, I've actually been sitting, sat in meetings where um, Sounds like it's really where he goes. <laughs> he goes <laughs> <laughs> and I, didn't, I didn't know what the hell it was, and they finally told me that it was the louvers. And it's it's amazing, you know, you'll be sitting in this room and you're getting hot, and the clients drilling you, and then you hear the <laughs> and it's like all the you know the fresh air comes in, and it's it's great. It really is it is amazing. Um, and if it gets too hot, and you're you know you can open up a window. Yeah. Are there fans associated with those uh, the air coming? There's not. So the so the way the, the building was designed is is it's a uh, it's a donut shape, and what happens is the, the heat actually gets sucked into the central invention. I mean, invention. Right. Exactly. So the air will actually come in through the louvers and through the windows, and exit through this donut hole shaft that goes up. So the natural ventilation. It's, it's a it's a great thing. Um, you know, some of the other highlights are um, when it gets too sunny, these automatically these sunshades automatically come down and will open and close according to how bright it is. Um, the all the toilets and urinals are you know low no flow. We have thirty percent less water uh, by doing that. Um, I, so this is, this kind of pertains back to the, the energy code consultant and building the model. Um, you know, for this project, we wanted to make sure that we were going to be okay without having AC in the summer. And when they went through their model, they basically determined that, you know, for 18 to 20 hours, the temperature will climb above 80 degrees. So that's over the entire year. So that's, you know, very, you know, very distinct days, times where that is going to happen. And basically, the, the platform of the office is if it gets hot, just wear shorts that day. <laughs> Open the windows, get the. Um, in terms of heating, uh, we've got a, it's a hydronic uh, hot water heaters, and you can see them here. So essentially, these, these heaters right here are right next to the windows. So you know, when these are closed, and a lot, you know, we lose a lot of heat gain from the glazing. And so it's important, you know, all these uh, heaters are located adjacent to the window, so it's kind of in, in this space. Um, 
this this building is unique um, in the, for the city of Seattle. If, if you were to do the component versus the building model, so those are one of those two options. Um, the, the component works for this project because we can cheat, because we can do insulation in certain places, and we can increase our um, shading and all that kind of stuff. Um, whereas the building model will look at it and say, all right, we've got these louvers up here. Those are leaking cold into the space. It's not very much, but the model will basically designate that and say, all right, we've got an issue here. How are we going to fix it? So that's one of the issues with moving from the component or prescriptive where you're actually you know, writing and figuring out the energy code as opposed to presenting an actual building model to the city jurisdiction. Because the, the city will say, all right, well, you're losing a lot of you're losing a lot of heat right here. Why is that and how are you going to mediate it? So it, it's, it's one of the these things is the energy code is changing um, how we get permitted on uh, stuff. Yeah. On well, those heater units you're talk, you got in there, mm -hmm. they look like the old radiators. That's right. So. Now, are those more efficient than having a baseboard system uh, for it, or what? Um. So, so basically, the, the baseboard uses electric. You no, know, I'm talking about the water. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just know that these are strategically placed throughout you know, the floor plan. Yeah. Um, you know, space, space for that. I guess, and then also, you know, you see, there's a lot of uh, louvers or sun shades. Are those movable? These are not. No, these are actually. Um, the angle of these are based on the trajectory of the sun as it comes across. And those are all things that you know we look at very at the very beginning of the project. Um so what next? Let's see. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so then so so that so there's the twenty so we talked about industry standard talked about Seattle um, Energy Code 2030 Challenge. Uh, the next thing is the Living Building Challenge. So the Living Building Challenge is a net zero. It's independent from the grid, uh, self-sustaining. Um, basically, this is this is a project that, in the downturn, uh, when we had a lot of time on our hands, um, <laughs> we entered this competition. Um, there's a couple of different competitions, and actually um, got first place in, in a couple of competitions. So this is a theoretical project uh, called EcoLab, and uh, I tried to research up on it. I actually didn't have an opportunity to work on it, but um, I can you know, go through some basics. Um, essentially, let's see here. So this is you know this is what it looks like from the sky. The idea is that it's it's a it's a vertical farm. It's something that you live in, it's something that you farm in, and it's something that becomes a social gathering area for people. And so um, in this section, this you know, shows pretty well um, a couple of the different elements that, that went into this project. Um, so the uh, essentially, the well, along the windows is where we've got a lot of the farming on the on the one side, and that's you know the, the south southwest basin bases where they're going to get the most sun and can naturally grow you know, vegetables, tomatoes, lettuce, all that kind of stuff. Um, so not only is that a benefit that we can utilize the sun almost like a greenhouse to generate these plants and vegetables. Uh, it also, actually, the plants will help to uh, cool the area a little bit. Um, and, and what happens is, so here's, in terms of how the air works, uh, there's these heat tunnels here in the, in the I'll show them. So 
basically we've got natural air coming into these tubes underneath and up into the spaces. And just like the donut, through, through the heat being on this one side, it's drawing that natural ventilation out. So the natural air is coming out, going up and up and out of it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, I guess, this is the venting here.
and one of the, the benefits of having the concrete wall on the on this side of the building is is similar to like in the southwest where they actually have got a lot of adobe or um, high mass high density walls the heat will hit the walls and in the night uh, it will actually keep the house warm because the sun's been hitting that mass all day and then the night will actually cool the walls and so during the day the interior is actually cool so that's the concept behind having you know a large concrete mass on the back is that start to retain some of that heat. So, um, and then there's, you know, uh, on top of this is, uh, you know, social aspects of it. Um, the Equal Laboratory provides meals, um, potentially for homeless. Um, the gray water is uh, essentially employed into bathing facilities or, you know, like toilets. The, the hydroponics, there's a training center for residents to help them learn how to do that. Um, you know, longer term housing, co -mingles. So it's just, it, it's basically a kind of a city within itself, basically. Yeah. How many residents is that designed to be? I don't know. Okay. That is fair. Yeah. Um, on the roof there, is that photovoltaic systems I'm looking at? It is, yeah. So we've got photovoltaics up here <laughs> along with wind.